spend a few hours talking about the requirements for posting our clinical trials, our applicable clinical trials on clinicaltrials.gov. So clinical trial registration and trial results reporting. So we had some updates and changes in the regulations just a bit ago, and we have seen changes in how the FDA inspects sponsors and CROs because of this. The expectation that we are, we have that responsible party, which we'll talk about here in a moment, that has infrastructure in place to ensure that we are determining which studies are required to be registered on clinicaltrials.gov and to make sure that we're keeping that information up to date. But we are going to talk about the role and expectations of that responsible party. We're going to look at clinical trial registration requirements and talk about two trial documents that the FDA is expected, and NIH, is expecting that we will submit when the clinical trial results information is submitted. And we'll also look at the trial results reporting requirements for any products that are unapproved or unlicensed or uncleared, as well as for those approved products. So we, we want to make sure that we are gathering information, appropriate information, appreciating that this is, you know, really, if you want to say it's a full-time job, it's a lot of work as we'll see. There's a lot of information that has to be tracked and captured and not always set up to do what we need to be doing. So we're going to talk about those applicable clinical trials. And you know, some of the concerns that we've seen, NIH handed this over to the FDA a few years ago for looking for compliance because they're out there looking at those studies. So as we walk through this, we'll talk about the types of studies that we are looking for to be registered. So the final rule for FIDA, for clinicaltrials.gov, it was originally brought into place in 2007, unfortunately Christmas, the day after Christmas, 2007, and what was found is that we were not registering studies, we were not registering results, less than 50% actually, I believe it was 46% of results of studies that were ongoing were actually being captured and reported. So they tweaked it a bit and kind of put the squeeze on with the final rule, which we'll talk about here in a moment, and now we have, as you'll see here for your, your handout, a draft guidance on civil monetary penalties relating to clinicaltrials.gov data bank. So we'll talk about those too, and they can be rather hefty. So what we see is that through the National Library of Medicine of NIH, we have the data bank for clinicaltrials.gov. So what is the purpose of clinicaltrials.gov? Can you chat to me in a few words what the purpose of clinicaltrials.gov is? Does anyone know? Are you all being shy? So clinicaltrials.gov, right, exactly. So as, as Thomas is saying, it's a disclosure of available trials to potential subjects and the results. Right, as Ruthann is saying, you know, make clinical trials public. Tara informed people of clinical trials, right? We're looking at patients. It's information, it's a portal for patients to be able to go and determine what type of clinical research is being conducted in their therapeutic area, in their geographic region. So, we know, since it has come about, that we all use it in different ways. And there was a lot of concern about putting results out there, that we were sharing information about products with competitors. It's harder now, if those of you who may have navigated this you know, 12 years ago, it's harder now to get information than it was in the past because people were using it to mine to determine, hey, where are we going to place our study? Who is conducting this type of research? So not just potential subjects and patients, but also those of us in the industry. This final rule provides for expanded registry and results uh, data bank information that we have to incorporate into our clinical trial process. It is part of good clinical practice, 42 CFR 11. So we are looking at registration of these studies, and there are different types of studies that must be registered. So for drugs and biologics products, we'd be looking at controlled investigations. The regulations say other than phase one clinical investigations of a product that is subject to FDA regulation. And a combination product, we would be looking at the primary mode of action of that combination product. Now, it's important to understand that even though the regulations do not require us to register phase one studies, that the pharma code does. Music